Við byggum til internet, við vitum hvernig það virkar. Dear listeners, welcome to the Pirate Podcast. Today in a special edition, we have visitors from Russia. Welcome Alexander Isavnin. Hello everyone. I am Octavia Jonsdottir from the Icelandic Pirates. In this special edition, Alexander and I will be asking each other questions of a pirate nature about each other's movements, uh, about each other's parties, and about the future. First question. The Pirate Party of Russia, does that exist? Well, formally, under the Russian law, we do not exist. We experienced some troubles among very other opposition parties in Russia with our registration. Well, that's a current political situation. But we exist logically. We are sharing our values. We're raising awareness of current issues. We have meetings. We have projects. We are running conference related to our, so we exist, but we do not exist under the legal space in Russia. Mm. So I know that Icelandic pirates are one of uh, among successful pirates in the world. But uh, the first question, how uh, your movement organized here in Iceland? What let people get together? What led you to idea of going to local politics? I think there were movements already before uh, the actual Pirate Party movement became active here. Pirates are international, and many of the people that are in the Pirate Party uh, in Iceland or the Pirate Movement have spent time abroad, uh, have been in international politics or policy of uh, some sorts, and the the reason i mean we came into being six six almost seven seven years after the first pirate party in sweden so that's quite a while personally i had met many pirate parties before uh, the icelandic one um, was was founded and i think it happened on the back of uh, political smaller political parties such as uh, borgar hreyfingin the citizens movement and then later hreyfingin the movement, which had uh, Birgitta Jonsdottir, which some of our listeners may know, in, in, in them. And she then was a part of the founding group of the Pirates uh, of Iceland, right? Uh, among uh, a, a larger group of individuals, of course. And those, I think the driving force behind it were, uh, I guess, what we now can call traditional pirate values, you know, that had to do with the you know, the, the the legal environment of the 21st century, the internet, an open and free internet, transparency, fighting against corruption. And that, the last part specifically in Iceland, meant a lot after the economic collapse, uh, collapse of 2018, here in, uh, eight, uh, here in Iceland. People had gone to the streets and had demonstrated that we were riding on the back of a very powerful movement of people here that had enough had enough of corruption, had enough of uh, people not having access to direct democratic processes, you know. Um, so I think the, the birth of the movement here is very much due to those, uh, those circumstances. And then from there, we had a successful uh, election, uh, or actually two, that rendered us three representatives in parliament and one re representative in the city council of our capital, Reykjavik. And from there, it just slowly grew. Uh, our grassroots has been quite active, I want to say. And we've had representatives that have been fortunate with a, an active grassroots movement, um, both <laughs> in, in yelling and shouting and, and holding them accountable, uh, but also in supporting them and showing them that there is a space on which they can stand on when they're in the forefront advocating for our rights. Uh, in terms of the activities that you guys are doing in Russia, what type of projects or what kind of pirate, what are the main pirate um, topics that 
that you have put at the forefront? Well, for sure, you use the uh, cool terminology of uh, 21st century rights and agenda and legislations. So uh, in current political situation, our only possible uh, way to communicate is raising awareness. Mm -hmm. And we try to raise awareness of new 21st century digital rights, internet-related freedom, freedom to access of information, the right to stay anonymous uh, in, in the face of powers. Mm -hmm. So such modern activities. We formed, uh, uh, we're also running uh, a big conference, which became now big, it started as, as an install fest uh, six years ago, and now it's not just technological conference with the styling use of Twitter and sharing technologies, but also discussing new technologies and ways of development. We have also a podcast. I hope this podcast will be podcasted <laughs> with our podcast also. Uh, uh, Pirate Party activists also running uh, another projects related for the same digital agenda. Mm -hmm. The Roscom Svoboda project is uh, which observing uh, state activities in the internet uh, in the tries in, in attempts to suppressing freedom of speech mm. and implementing technical censorship. Uh, it was created specially for such observation and now it have also sub projects. Pirate party activists uh, help uh, in legal way uh, to the ones who are being suppressed digitally in Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're trying to to raise our values. Also, Russian Pirate Party this year and previous year was co-organizers of uh, the street meetings related to upcoming uh, internet regulation, trying to show political protests and let young people go to the streets mm -hmm. and show their opinion. And the consequences, I guess, of the legislation that's being passed or the regulations that are. Unfortunately, we can't uh, affect such things. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's Russian political situation, mm -hmm. the Putin's vertical of power. But more people now know that uh, their freedom are limited by government. And they are now aware how to get rid uh, or get around content blocking mm -hmm. or stay more uh, invisible for the government on the Internet. So educating more educated people is a, our and success in this way. Yeah, and creating awareness, as you say, is always the first step, especially when you have a message um, yeah. as, as the pirate one. Uh, uh, so you mentioned that corruption uh, is one of the topics of Icelandic party. Uh, the corruption uh, and uh, election processes mm -hmm. are uh, main uh, topics of all Russian opposition. So Please tell uh, what main uh, problems uh, Icelandic Pirate Party have started solving uh, while came to power. In terms of corruption, specifically, or yeah, in general, well, I think that there are many different aspects that that I could touch upon here. I think when you look at uh, international events such as the Panama Papers and you look at the number of individuals per capita that were named in the Panama Papers, Iceland outranks most countries. We had an excruciating amount of individuals that were named in the Panama Papers. And that goes to show that corruption doesn't only thrive in large, big, vast, bureaucratic democracies or societies. Corruption thrives where there is an actual interest, strong interest in subverting, right? So I think a part of what the Pirate Party has done successfully here is calling out corruption, defining among the people, creating awareness of what is corruption. Uh, there's not a lot of Icelanders. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a decent-sized country with very few people and more sheep than people. So I think sometimes it can be difficult to 
f- f- you know, for for a regular person to say, well, these pirates are always talking about corruption. Is everything then corruption? I'm just helping out my cousin, right? Mm-hmm. The Panama Papers kind of solidified that. It's not about helping out your family. It's about systemic ways in which money is being taken out of the country. It is building legal frameworks in this country with exceptions built in. So you have exceptions to legal frameworks that are built into the legal reforms, which means there will always be a loophole for people to get around. That is corruption. And a big part of not just encouraging and, 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 and working very hard on whistleblower laws and, and um, the IMI, um, the International Modern Media Initiative, um, that was a huge part of what the pirates and specifically Birgitta Jonstotter has worked tirelessly to get through. Um, that allows for a safe haven of data. It allows for safe investigative reporting. It allows for um, protections for whistleblowers. All of those things are detrimental to an open and free democracy. They're detrimental to also opening up and blowing the whistle on the, the corruption that we see. And it's rampant and it's everywhere. Of course, not just in Iceland. A part of I I lived abroad for more than thirty years, and a part of me coming back and uh, and living now in Iceland is, you can't be walking around everyone's backyards telling them how to clean up their backyards when there's a trash fryer in your own backyard, and and I think changing the system that allows for these exceptions and loopholes that allow for powerful men to continue to take money out of the government from the public for their own benefit that uh, keeps them tying these knots to their friends and to their families, that keeps them finding loopholes that allow them to fly under the radar as they tax evade, as they find tax havens, as they find in ways in which the legal frameworks can be used against the people that they're supposed to serve, there will be pirates in Iceland. I'm I'm absolutely sure of it. Really cool to hear this, because well, anti-corruption uh, is the one uh, of uh, the main uh, agenda topics of all uh, Russian political opposition, of all Russian unregistered and unofficial movements. Uh, actually, pirates in Russia tries to be metapolitical and mm-hmm. focus only uh, on this digital rights, on the internet, on freedom to access of information. And uh, we really great. It's really great to hear that uh, when uh, people come in power, in real power, they still solving the questions uh, related to their country, uh, to uh, possibilities, to new possibilities of their citizens. So that's that's really cool. And it's about distribution of power. At the end of the day, when you have power, power in itself can corrupt. You have to be very careful when you're given power, whether that is through position or, 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 or privilege or whatever it is, and distribute it, lead by example. Uh, distribute the power as soon as you get it, because if you don't, it's going gonna, it's gonna to end up corrupting you. I think that's a very important point. And I think because Iceland is so small, we have a unique opportunity to take some to what, what to some may be considered risks of saying things out loud um, by, by, by pushing the buttons that say, no, this is not okay. You are, in fact, embezzling funds. You are lying on the way that you're using government money to do X, Y, Z, K, etc. And I think that, to me, is the most por- important thing that the pirate movements can do. You can see what the Czech pirates are doing right now uh, with Babbage. Uh, which is basically they're going to court. You know, they've, they've, they have a case. They, you know, they've gone through all the channels that they have to go through to say, you know, this is corruption. We want something done about this. And when nothing was done, they used their right to say, okay, well, then we're going to court. It takes courage and bravery to stand up. But those of us that have the privilege to do so need to do so. 
are obligated to do so. Because for every person that stands up, there are 10 people watching going, okay, well, if their courage will be contagious, let, let, you know, uh, th let their bravery be an example. Yeah, uh, we actually met uh, the following, that's young people in Russia, things uh, that uh, they, when they watch stream from a public event or an official uh, illegal meeting, uh, the, that they participated watching just watching YouTube stream. Mm -hmm. Actually, well, now we need, you need to bring more people to the streets. It's really astonishing to hear. I hope once Russian pirates will get into real power. And uh, it's really cool to hear what we'll have to do when we get to powers. And, and yeah, speaking of that, what is a typical Russian pirate? What kind of person supports the pirate movement in Russia? Oh, it's a difficult question <laughs> because we, we, do, we, we do not make special statistics. But, no, I, but, but, but I think uh, uh, that's the most general answer. It's a person who is young in its, uh, inside its soul. Mm. So who is, who is open for a new knowledge, who is open for new technologies, mm. who is open for new communications, for new knowledge. Because, well, again, one of the metapolitical values of Russian part parties is freedom to access the information. Mm. So only ones who share this can be members of Pirate Party. And I think all Russian members and supporters of Pirate Party are like this. Yeah, transparency in governance and access to information. It's such a fundamental part of any society, really, especially now. Uh, and new technologies brings new possibilities. Panama well, with new, new responsibilities. You mentioned Panama Papers. Mm. Well, Russian oligarchs and uh, officials are very well mentioned there also. Yeah but with possibility to analyze such data uh, and, for example, compare them to Russian uh, or Icelandic open data or open government registries, mm -hmm. brings this information about corruption. In, well, past uh, centuries technologies with only everything only on paper, yeah, the only governmental officials, only governmental investiga investigators uh, could uh, analyze it and could get to, uh, to decisions of corruption and non-corruption. Now such activities are, became, with newer technologies, with new approaches, became available to everyone. Exactly, exactly. Now I forget, am I... I wanted to ask a little bit more about the Russian, the Russian pirate. You mentioned it's someone who believes in access to information as a fundamental value to society. Uh, someone who wants transparency in governance. Uh, what do they do? What does? Uh, where are they? Are are the pirates uh, in Russia mainly in the bigger cities, or are they spread all over Russia? I well, mean, a huge country. Yeah, <laughs> for sure they spread all all over Russia. Mm -hmm. But well, while founders of Pirate Party was actually in Moscow, mm. first of all they are also not staying in place; they are moving. Uh, around the country. Uh, we have great support uh, from uh, for Pirate Party in Yekaterinburg and in Novosibirsk, which are e very east from uh, Moscow, well, one, one of the cities. Uh, it's two hours flight east and another one four hours flight east. So I hope we also, with new technologies, can be heard and seen uh, in smaller cities and villages. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we, we do not try to count and determine the exact locations when, when we need to participate in an event or support a, a political or public event in the city for sure. When then we see that local pirates can do this, can run this. Um, pirates in Russia also, well, not, not as far as we are not official registered party, we participate in activities of other opposition movements ah. in other um, uh, events organized by opposition movements. In some cases, uh, we even uh, cooperate with official political parties. If this required, uh, well, if the if current agenda is actually fits our ones, 
in some cases, like in local elections in Moscow, uh, pirates, including me, uh, cooperated with formal parties who needed younger peoples, who needed open-minded peoples. Mm. Then, well, we, we have not succeeded, actually. We, we still have no representation of uh, a, any pirates. But if required, we cooperate with the ones who support our values. Exactly. And it's that influence and it's 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 that access to influence and people in power that can be just as strong and have s- just as big an impact uh, on actual outcomes of policy, on on actual things that affect all our lives. Uh, uh, the latest activity of uh, Russian Pirate Party is a few days ago the parliament uh, passed a bill on electronic elections. Actually, elections in the real pain for uh, Russian opposition in uh, modern days. You can read some cases about governance ele- uh, gov- uh, governor governor's elections in the far east of Russia when the main political party like United Russia is not being supported, even with great uh, interference uh, to uh, local election commissions, to faking elections in uh, regions and districts where uh, the few scrutineering uh, uh, presented, but mm-hmm. there is no independent election commission members. Most of election commission members in Russia are actually school teachers, municipal school teachers, and mun- uh, municipal maybe doctors, municipal lowest level municipal workers. Mm-hmm. They can be uh, influenced or ordered by school principals, uh, hospital doctors, while municipal bosses. So scrutineering over uh, elections is one of the main maybe thing important for Russian opposition. One of the paragraphs of uh, Russian Pirate Party agenda is digital elections. It, uh, w- digital elections was uh, one of the main targets since creation of Pirate Party. But now with these new bills adopted by parliament, the classical parliament, they open in a lot of new possibilities for interfering and faking elections. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I hope on Monday uh, I'll participate uh, and first experiments will be on municipal, uh, uh, on city council elections. Uh, in Moscow this autumn and a lot of pirates participating in well commission an official commission who will try to determine how how election uh, how electronic elections first electronic election experiment will work in Moscow Mm -hmm. we'll try to uh, find and uh, find possibilities for powers to interfere and cut it so let's start the first meeting after approval of these uh, elections will be on this Monday. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's definitely one of the things that is at the top of any pirate parties or pirate movements list of wishes for the Internet is that we can somehow, in some way, be able to make electronic voting secure. Um I have to say, and I, I don't speak on behalf of the Icelandic pi- private, uh, Pirate Party when I say this, but there, to date, has not been any system or any technology that can be deployed on a national level that would allow for the security of an election to stand the standards that we should be setting for democratic elections. Uh, and until that day, um, don't get me wrong, Um, the grassroots movement here in Iceland does electronic voting. Every time we have a policy, uh, we have a bunch of meetings. Um, The meetings go into um, a a, a voting system that we've made, uh, which is a a, a great voting system, absolutely. Um, And it does have a lot of checks and balances and certain security precautions and and, and all of that, right? You can go in and you can comment. and, And ultimately, this is the place where we vote for people in our executive board, where we vote for people uh, on primaries, before elections, the primary lists. So when the pirate movement here starts electing the list of candidates that they want to put forth in in each district um, and constituency, depending on what type of election, this is where we do that too. And we are happy 
with the way that that system is in performing those tasks. I can't think of a single pirate here in Iceland that would say that system is sufficient to have parliamentary elections, right? For sure. Even in Russia, in Russian Pirate Party, we, ha- we have electronic direct democracy. Mm-hmm. So, but again, it's important uh, and it's working among a set of uh, people who think the same things. So who are colleagues, but uh, for currently for parliamentary election or even for municipal elections, exactly. there, are, there are a lot of possible uh, interference from outsiders who don't share our values. So it's really important to be careful. We need this, but we need really to be careful with uh, electronic elections. As we know, for example, in Estonia, their electronic keys have been compromised and Absolutely. they have to do something. Mm-hmm. They are great country, they are ahead of others. There were risks. They were ready to take it. Exactly. No, and, and that the Estonia case is just that, you know, taking a risk and it's risks are always or should be calculated, right? Calculated risks. We are taking this is the gain that we're going to get from taking these risks on these terms. And this is what we know. And then you mitigate as much as you can. And the rest you have to just risk manage, right? When it comes to something as important as the right to vote and the right to vote in a representative democracy, you know, we have to be super careful. The interference is not just from people in opposition to us. There are much stronger uh, interests at stake that could come in and interfere. So I think that and that brings me to a a fun point uh, in terms of just you know, control and monitoring with elections. It's it's interesting here in Iceland it yeah, an open and free democracy and, and, and we hold elections and we have many of them and obviously a big part of Iceland is concentrated here in the southwest where we are now, where the capital is. But obviously Icelanders live all over. And um and what we found I think by nature, all over the world, I think pirates are system thinkers, they're system administrators, they're system builders. And so when we come in contact with a system, we start probing into it, we start checking it, we start pen testing it, we start looking at its purpose, figuring out how to optimize it. So we can't, there's an itch in most pirates that I've seen everywhere, regardless of whether it was in Turkey in the United States, you know, in the Czech Republic, it's, oh, what, what's this system, you say? Let me, let me have a look at that. And when it comes to how we hold elections here, we have uh, legal frameworks and laws and, and, and all these other things. And we also have a very active community of people that both count votes, ensure that the regulation is upheld, um, make notifications and come with mentions and, and scrutinize the way in which elections are, are being held. And I heard unofficially the other day that after the Pirate Party in Iceland came into that process and more and more pirates actively, uh, both on behalf of the Pirate Party, but also not on behalf in in a non-official capacity, have come into, there have been, I'm not going to name a number, but a lot more notices made you know ballot boxes where the tape wasn't secured a ballot box where it wasn't locked or it was had a faulty back Uh, ballot boxes that were left alone for an hour and then picked up again Um, we've had cases here in Iceland where a man literally went around with a ballot box and was collecting votes from people that hadn't showed up in a in a small town because he knew that they had voting rights. So he just went to their houses. Yeah, I see you haven't voted from the list. Do you want me to take your vote? Yeah, that's um, that's really cool uh, to hear it. Well, actually not cool because <laughs> you have these issues. But uh, absolutely exact issues are existing in Russia. A- and such issues are successfully exploited for current United Russia Party uh, by uh, Mr. Putin and his powers just to keep in 
in two hours for last years. If you uh, in Russia we actually missed uh, missed first interferences like this in 2000 in year 2000 mm. maybe the next elections around 2003. Now we can do nothing. This system have secured itself. Mm. And uh, yes, we uh, all political all Russian political activists trying to scrutinizing and observing elections. Some uh, participate in election commissions officially. But even with such greater interference, now people becoming really upset of uh, current United Par uh, United Russia party uh, because elections, uh, as I said, in Far East and some regions, governor's elections, mm -hmm. when that person appointed by Putin himself and supported, such persons were losing. Random people from from the list who was added to the list of candidates just to show uh, to show that there are multiple choice are becoming governors. Mm -hmm. So topics related to election, to its quality, classical paper ballot selections mm -hmm. are really important. They are. They are. And I'm, I'm not meaning to to say that the situation here in Iceland is just as grave as in, in Russia. Obviously, um, the challenges and the struggle that you have in Russia is way above and beyond the issues that we have here. But they're of the same nature. And I believe they're done for the same reasons. Interfering with elections or <coughs> not performing elections according to what the observation guides and the rules and the regulations say only serve one purpose. And it's not sloppiness. You know, yeah. it, it, this is the integrity of the entire system. And it needs to be kept completely clean, squeaky clean. And everyone needs to go by the book, right? There is no, there should never be any leeway or room for, for any self-interpretation or any, any, <laughs> how do you say, <laughs> any, any individual thought, you know, we, we have the rule book, we have to keep, keep exactly. to it. Exactly. Okay. Uh, I suggest to move, uh, well, a bit out of politics for a moment mm. and, uh, a bit out from, uh, uh, issues with we have in Russia, or you are successfully solving here. Uh, could you tell more, uh, well, about uh, how uh, Pirate Party in uh, Iceland lives? I'm wearing a shirt with your logo, mm -hmm. and actually it differs a bit from standard logo of Pirate Party. It does. What, 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 what is it on this logo? <laughs> It's, I don't uh, know for, if viewers for the, can for the, see. For the, for the, for the ones <laughs> who are just listening, it's sti uh, standard Pirate Party flag, but with a symbol on it. Yeah. So the symbol is a fish. When you uh, catch a fish and you remove the head and you open it up in the middle. So you've taken all the guts out and you open it up in the middle and kind of butterfly it. That's what that is in the middle of the pirate uh, P flag, so to speak. Um, yeah, that's a fish. I think it has to do the I, I w Icelanders are a nation of storytellers. Yeah. Um, tell, the story tell a story behind <laughs> the fish. The story the that symbol. I've been told is for a very short period, and please excuse me for for telling the story in my own words, but I believe it was six days. Um, a small island outside of Iceland that's a part of Iceland was uh, independent, and they flagged that flag. It was a simple flag with this exact uh, fish, this salted fish um, on their flag. And they flagged their independence for these six days. Um, mm. And uh, in I, it's called the dog days, I believe, in English. <laughs> um, so <coughs> when the pirates of Iceland, I think w there's not that many of us, as I mentioned, and I think we do have a need to make everything our own. We have a need to put our footprint on everything. Uh, it's very hard for us just to take something uh, as is. We have to kind of put our inspiration on it and put our footstep on it and our footprint. I mean, so I think it's a genius idea because for Icelanders, it has a reference and for everyone else, it is quite unique and, and, and it goes to Icelandic history. And a bit of independence. And absolute in independence. I think it also goes to show that 
Iceland for many, many years has been governed by by very wealthy and strong families. You know, as in any country, you have families that have easier access, right? Easier access to power, easier access to position, and 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 through that access to 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 setting the sp- the, the the space and the pace in which the rest of us follow, and. <laughs> And that, to me, will always symbolize that revolution against that power, that rise up against that power, um, that the system as it is today is not serving the purpose that it should. And as long as it's not transparent, transparently governed, as long as the citizens that are voting people in to represent them, as long as their interests are not first, um, we have to keep we have to keep at it you have to keep rising up against that system so yeah six days of independence smack in the middle of a pirate logo <laughs> smack yeah straight in the middle yeah so it's how it's called <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, also, I've noticed that um, you are not using words pirates in uh, location on a map so uh, it sounds like piratar well, uh, is, it an, uh, is it an Icelandic word? It is. It's the Icelandic word for pirates. We used to be called Pirata Party. Uh, and so party in Icelandic also, like in English, means party, as in to have a good time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so that was giving us um, a lot of backlash. I think something that really, <laughs> that really binds pirates together wherever we are is uh, people really hate the name. People really hate the name. It doesn't matter whether you're in Sweden. I don't, is it the same in Russia? Like pirates? Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, in Russia, actually, why a Russian Pirate Party is not registered, let me tell. Well, a bit of sets, but funny story. <laughs> um, well, in Russia, to register party, first of all, you need uh, to have at least 10 people um, chapter in at least 50 regions of Russia. Mm-hmm. So uh, after that, well, you need to uh, do general meeting, uh, which appoints creation and do some formalities. And mm-hmm. then then uh, protocols goes to Ministry of Law, which must check that all formalities right. have passed. The papers are OK and then register. And uh, Ministry of Law rejected. And then uh, when founders goes to the court. Right. Asking, yes, we have everything OK. And court made uh, a decision that uh, the piracy on rivers and seas of Russia is a crime. So they say that sea piracy exists, <laughs> it's a crime, <laughs> that Russian Pirate Party wouldn't be registered. <laughs> That's horrible. I'm so sorry. That is... Uh, so that in Icelandic is Sjóræningi, which is a sea pirate. And I've run for election now two times for parliamentary elections in 2016 and 2017. And each time, and two different um, constituencies, and each time people have come up to me and shouted in my face, sea pirate, sea pirate, why would you ever trust anyone who's stealing on the sea? Ah, and it's so, yeah. So we used to be called Pirata Party, and the party part, like the party. (laughs) Obviously, politics is supposed to be you know, very serious all the time. And you're not supposed to have yeah. fun at all doing anything. Um, so there was a decision made some years ago to take out the party. And and so instead of being Pirata Party, we just became Piratar. So Piratar just means pirates. Yeah, okay. In, in mm. Icelandic. So, but yeah, it's amazing. I want to say, though, once people get over the name, once we the, the 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 hurdle of the name is gone, there are so many people uh, that aren't necessarily involved in pirate politics, that aren't necessarily a voting pirate, that at the core, what they want and what they believe in and what's important to them is at the heart of the political agenda that pirates have. And I've experienced this in numerous countries, like all over Europe, this has been my experience, that people hate the name, uh, find it very untrustworthy, but once you get into conversation about transparency in governance, about anti-corruption, 
about how we need to go uh, securely but surely and steadily into the 21st century, that we need legal frameworks for the time that we're living in, not the past, that we need to look to the future as we lay down these laws, as we put in regulations, not the past. Most people agree and have very valid and good points. I don't necessarily agree with every knickknack of how it should be carried out, but it's just it still amazes me. Um, yeah, that there's so much in a name. Well, unusual name, the name which shifts uh, from uh, not just current policy but maybe legal traditions. That's tries to. Uh, and its global name, it works well, starting from Sweden mm -hmm. and now all, all, uh, all over the world. Absolutely. So that makes young people, people who uh, don't like and don't no longer trust to current political systems, mm -hmm. look at our side. Maybe yes, some dopes, but if the name of Pirate Party is the main dope for a people, mm -hmm. that's really cool if we can fulfill all other uh, thoughts but the name, mm -hmm. that's really great. Oh, I absolutely agree. I am so inspired uh, by the work that you're doing in Russia. Um, I'm in awe of the courage that you show and how you keep, you keep going. It's, we are fighting a much smaller battle but on the same topics, wanting the same things, building hopefully small bricks in the same future. Uh, but we're doing so in a place that may have all of those things, that may have corruption, may have all of the, but we have a freer expression. We have the option of being registered. We have the option of having you know, a, a voice that is heard. So... I'm just, um, yeah, I'm completely in awe of the courage that you guys are, uh, that, you know, the folks in the, in, the, in the Russian Pirate Party are showing by keep going on and not being deterred by all of the hindrances that you just mentioned in our conversation now. And you are, you are a successful Pirate Party which participates in country politics, in local politics, brings us a great example of where we should go that's when we get there, we, what we have to do and uh, let us know that we should not stop even we have some issues in Russia. Mm -hmm. You are really uh, brings us up with your example. Alexander, thank you so much um, for answering all of my questions and asking some really great ones. Okay, thank you very much. I was glad to be here. I was glad to see successful Pirate Party, Piratar, <laughs> here. I hope we'll, uh, we'll still keep these connections Absolutely. and exchange issues and, well, maybe even fight corruption together, which tries to, to run away through the borders. So let's keep connected. I think on that note of cross-border uh, solidarity collaboration to fight corruption, uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in and listening. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Ég segi bara, þingmaðurinn, hann þarf bara að fara í stiðferðslega endurhæfingu.